Biomedical labs are in the Palmer building. Uh, this is it, ma'am. Then this is where James Barry has his lab? Second floor, 202. Good. I'll just walk up. Oh, you can't just go up, ma'am. I need to call in your name. Peggy Sullivan. Dr. Sullivan. You have an appointment? No, but he knows who I am. Hmm. Well, just sign in the book there. You come to see his mice? They say they're the most famous mice in the world. Oh, there's a Dr. Peggy Sullivan here to see you. I'll tell her. Dr. Barry said you could come right up. Thank you. So you're Peggy Sullivan. Jim Barry. I would have known you anywhere. Well, we have been talking for about two years now. <laughs> At least. It's amazing how well you get to know someone on the internet. I assume the symposium brought you here? I thought I sent you an email last month saying I was coming. I guess I forgot to write it down. Um, I've been on to something and working around the clock. Now, I think I finally found a much easier and faster way Why to... Why not save it for the whole bunch? Bunch? You know, our far-flung team. Ted Frost from Scripps has already checked in. And Dworsky from Whitehead. And Livingston at Baylor said she'd try to come. We're gathering at five in the faculty lounge to finally meet. I suppose you told me that, too. I've really been out of it. I guess you also forgot that I asked you for four of your famous mice. No, that I remember. Six months ago. I sent a memo over to Harry Carter at Mendoza Pharmaceuticals saying I wanted you to have them, so it's up to him. You never heard anything? I heard. He sent me a transfer agreement filled with all sorts of restrictions. You can't do this, you can't do that. Publish, improve. Obviously, I was not inclined to sign it. Doesn't he realize we've been exchanging data for almost two years? Of course he does. I should have followed up, but since I moved on in a couple of postdocs... I'm I... not blaming you. Well, I don't like it. Carter's way off base. I'll talk to him this afternoon. I'm sure it won't be a problem. The problem is not so simply solved, Jim. Of course we believe in sharing data. You've been doing it right along, haven't you? Five of you, is it? We wouldn't have gotten half as far in twice the time if we hadn't. <laughs> Agreed. The data bank, internet, email, conferences, it's all about sharing data, right? We have money from NIH. They insist information be readily available. Right. Those are public funds. It shouldn't be different with industry funds. It's not so different. Didn't we publish as soon as you finished your original work? We didn't withhold any data. Many companies, even many researchers do, while pretending they don't. Personally, I think it's stupid. No help to anyone. Now tell me, Jim, how long did it take you to breed your first successful knockout mouse? That's not the point. Over two years. And how much money do you think Mendoza invested in it? Well, you must have figured you'd make it all back and more. Of course. But there is a certain amount of risk involved. And now we have to protect that investment. It's our obligation, just as real and important to a publicly held company as sharing data. See this product? Visaclear. We spent years developing it, finding the right solution that was viscous enough to stay in the eye and liquid enough not to annoy the user. A really excellent product. But we were aced in the marketplace because Bauer Hauser came out with their product four months before ours. Why? We made too much of our data available. It cost us, believe me, and all of our stockholders. Well, VisaClear was an over-the-counter commercial product. I'm not going to open a discount store of knockout mice. You're right. There is a difference. Your work isn't commercial drug development and marketing. 
but would we be investing the time and money and effort in your work if we didn't believe that in the predictable future it would have useful application? You're on the cutting edge. Every day some new genetic basis for illness and disease is revealed. We can't just keep up. We've got to get ahead and stay ahead. And we can only do that if we know what's going on in each other's labs. So you believe that all data should be made available to requesters without restrictions? That includes mice, rats, primates, any experiment or research material. Reagents, cells that have been isolated, viruses, everything, without putting on any restrictions. Jim, we've been supporting your research center for almost 10 years now. A lot of good things have resulted. Not to overlook that two Nobel laureates did their unique research there with our support. No one's had any problem with our policies. I've had no problem until now. Look around. See what's going on in other labs and companies. Entering only partial data into data banks. Preventing publication or postponing it until it's useless. Refusing to give out primary data and sources. This is true even of some labs that depend entirely on government and foundation funds public money. I don't agree with it any more than you do. Then you should give Dr. Sullivan the mice she wants. We sent her a transfer agreement. She signs it, she can have the mice. Maybe she didn't receive it. She has to sign it. Jim, it's not up to me. Legally, according to the contract you signed with us, we own the results of your work. Of course, you share the profits, and so does the lab, if there are any, that is. Those are the rules, always have been throughout much of the pharmaceutical industry. Don't look so glum, Jim. You're in the catbird seat. Come in. I'm disturbing you. No, no. You missed some interesting discussions. I just couldn't make it. Too bad you didn't get to meet the others. We got along great just as well in person as on the computer screen. Oh, well, maybe you can meet us for breakfast. You should hear Dvorsky Peggy, on. I went to Mendoza headquarters. I saw Harry Carter. He's not giving you or anyone any mice. And he's the man. The man. Why? He knows we've been working together, doesn't he? He had a lot of reasons. And actually, after he explained them to me, I could see that they made sense from where he sits. But from where I sit and where you sit, no reason could be good enough. I've got a contract that doesn't give me the right you to... You signed away your right? I guess I didn't realize the implications of the restrictions I agreed upon four years ago. It's all I dreamed of, to have my own lab. And it's been great here, really fine. Well, I don't want to make any trouble for you, so I'll just trash the whole study. If I can't cut any cross-sections, I can't go much further. Oh, well, who said happy endings are the reward for blood, sweat, and tears? I have a transfer agreement. You could read it, you could sign it, you could send it to Harry Carter when you get home. Jim, we each have to act according to our own conscience. Right? You're on the cutting edge. Every day some new genetic basis for illness and disease is revealed. We can't just keep up. We've got to get ahead and stay ahead. And we can only do that if we know what's going on in each other's labs. So you believe that all data should be made available to requesters without restrictions? That includes mice, rats, primates, any experiment or research material. Reagents, cells that have been isolated, viruses, everything, without putting on any restrictions. Jim, we've been supporting your research center for almost 10 years now. A lot of good things have resulted. Not to overlook that two Nobel laureates did their unique research there with our support. 
No one's had any problem with our policies. I've had no problem until now. Look around. See what's going on in other labs and companies, entering only partial data into data banks, preventing publication or postponing it until it's useless, refusing to give out primary data and sources. This is true even of some labs that depend entirely on government and foundation funds, public money. I don't agree with it any more than you do. Then you should give Dr. Sullivan the mice she wants. We sent her a transfer agreement. She signs it, she can have the mice. Maybe she didn't receive it. She has to sign it. Jim, it's not up to me. Legally, according to the contract you signed with us, we own the results of your work. Of course, you share the profits, and so does the lab, if there are any, that is. Those are the rules, always have been throughout much of the pharmaceutical industry. Don't look so glum, Jim. You're in the catbird seat. Come in. I'm disturbing you. No, no. You missed some interesting discussions. I just couldn't make it. Too bad you didn't get to meet the others. We got along great. Just as well in person as on the computer screen. Oh, well, maybe you can meet us for breakfast. You should hear divorce Peggy, beyond. I went to Mendoza headquarters. I saw Harry Carter. He's not giving you or anyone any mice. And he's the man. The man. Why? He knows we've been working together, doesn't he? He had a lot of reasons. And actually, after he explained them to me, I could see that they made sense from where he sits. But from where I sit and where you sit, no reason could be good enough. I've got a contract that doesn't give me the right you to... You signed away your right? I guess I didn't realize the implications of the restrictions I agreed upon four years ago. It's all I dreamed of, to have my own lab. And it's been great here, really fine. Well, I don't want to make any trouble for you, so I'll just trash the whole study. If I can't cut any cross-sections, I can't go much further. Oh, well, who said happy endings are the reward for blood, sweat, and tears? I have a transfer agreement. You could read it, you could sign it, you could send it to Harry Carter when you get home. Jim, we each have to act according to our own conscience. Right? 